internet line. Maybe even the internet might get the COVID, couldn't they? They can get the virus. Um, Need to get yes. it vaccinated. So we'll, we'll get it checked, uh, inshallah, next week so we don't have any interruptions. So do, do excuse us, please with all the technical difficulties we may come across. So if you haven't, if you are watching the show, uh, we are live every Friday with Ask the Happy Sheikhs uh, with lots of questions that you may have. So the number to ring is 0151-260-3986. You can send your messages on the Facebook, on the Abdullah Kulliam Society's Facebook. Sh go to the Facebook, share it, like it, and go to the AQS uh, YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel, press the bell button. That will notify you when we come on the air, inshallah. It's the best way to do it. So, Sheikh, Sheikh Harun, what do we have today? Uh, lots of nasheed, lots of... Uh, well, do you know what we'll do? While we're waiting for people to join us yes. and call in or yeah. messaging, let's sing, let's sing something. Yeah. Oh, let's do because that. Yeah. I think the last one we didn't do that. Did no, we? we didn't do that proper yeah, one, no. Which is good, mashallah, because it means a lot of people are calling in. Calling in. But we just like a good sing-along, don't we? <laughs> Jaharun yeah. loves it. I love it too. <laughs> Jaharun but loves only it. if I know the rhythms, you know. Yeah, because he knows the words. Yeah, he knows most of them. What? You know most of the words, so you you feel alright with it. Yeah, well. we'll do we'll do a maula, yeah. Yes, oh. everybody. Maula, ya salli wa sallim iman abada ala habibika khayyil khalqi kulli Muhammad. We have a call? Okay, we'll interrupt our Nasheed and we'll go to the caller. Sheikh Harun, <laughs> please take the first call. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Who am I speaking to? Muhammad. Muhammad. Muhammad, what's your second name? I'm from Liverpool. Muhammad from Liverpool, we've heard that, mashallah. And what's your second name, Muhammad? Muhammad Asim. Asim. Muhammad Asim. Muhammad Asim. How old are you? Six. Mashallah, six. I want your phone to ask Sheikh Harun something today. No, no, don't ask me anything. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, he's put you there. Do I know Muhammad Asim? Do I know you? Yeah, 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 you do. You were in the masjid, were you? Which masjid? Yeah. This one, the Abdullah Quilliam masjid? Yeah. Okay, go cool. on then, what do you want to ask? I'm still trying to figure out who he is. Uh, I'm going to read to Surah Hulmeta. Oh, no, that's Sheikh Waddah. He's the Qari. The <laughs> 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 very first young caller on the Ask the Imam. Yes, yeah, go on. the Imam, go ahead. Narullah al Muqadah. Narullah al Muqadah. Alati tattari wa la lahida. Inna alayhim muqsada. Fiya madim mumadada. MashaAllah. Sounds well done. MashaAllah. Good for us. Well beautifully, MashaAllah. Do you know what? Uh, the best thing you can do is phone in on Thursdays. I want all the other children to listen to you read that surah. MashaAllah. Are you going to phone in on Thursday, inshaAllah, as well? At six o'clock. Inshallah. Because there's a talent show there, inshallah. You phone in, all the other children will listen to you as well. Mashallah, you read beautifully. Inshallah. Salam alaikum, Muhammad. We'll see you. We'll hear you read next time, inshallah. Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair. Allah fadak. Um, 
So. You know what the kids are calling me here? Because my daughter, said, when I left home for Jura, she said, I'm going to call in to read Quran. She and started off last week. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was telling her that's Thursday, not Friday. <laughs> yes, they're, they're, well, at least they're interested. But it's beautiful, thing, it's right? beautiful. Um, you can't get on. Good, um, I mean, even we had the first call, a six-year-old child ringing in to recite, in to ask the Imam. So, we didn't ask him, does he have a question for the Imam? We've though, got a question, though, <laughs> Sheikh Harun, mashallah. This is Sheikh for Sheikh oh, Harun. No, no, okay. No, right. no, it's not fair. You can't be asking the no, question. It's meant to be somebody calling. Someone after Salah. Asli said, uh, there's a big thing that I want you to talk about. So I said, okay. you know what? We've got a program. I'm going to ask Sheikh Harun on the program and see his answer for it. It's about lockdown. Everyone's in lockdown now. Everyone's yeah. with the family spending time. And someone said, no one's talked about how do you pray with your family? Where do you stand if you pray with your wife? If you pray with your little kid, where do they stand? Do you teach them the etiquette? If it's loads of kids, or boys and girls, if they're older, if they're younger? Yeah. Someone mm. along that side. Go on. Excellent question. That's a good question. Can you get the phone in? <laughs> I tried to. <laughs> you should have phoned in, should you? Should have, yeah. Tried to. Well, yeah, no. Jazakallah khairan for whoever asked that question. So the question is like um, having jama'at in the house, which is important, which is important to having jama'at in the house. And also just add to that, so important to have adhan and iqamah within the house because adhan removes uh, shayateen, devils, and so on from, um, from the house. But in terms of the jama'at itself, uh, and one of the good things to do um, is to have, if you've got a young boy above the age of seven, have him do the adhan. Get him into the habit of doing the adhan. So he becomes like the mu'adhan of the house. And if you've got more than one son, then mashallah, it's alternator, so they're all doing mm. it. Mm. Um, and even, I, I'll just add this in. Sayyidina Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he even allowed a child above the age of seven to lead the salah. Uh, although most of the other imams didn't allow that. And there is hadith, there's a discussion of hadith. But with Imam al-Shafi'i, um, a boy who's above the age of what's called tamiz, above the age of seven onwards, so he understands that he can lead the prayer. So and at home it's important to encourage the kids, especially get them in the jama'ah, get them praying. Then the normal setup. So you have the adhan, you have the iqama, then you're stood at the front, whoever the imam stood at the front. And then, uh, I mean, the sunnah way of doing it is that you have the males in a row behind. You have the males, so if there's male boys, if there's boys there, that they, f they make their own row. And then, and then the females behind. So, so the wife is a row behind the boys. So it's imam, then the boys, and then the, the mother, and if there's any girls, then, then they will stand with the mother. If it's just husband and wife, then the wife should stand a row behind. She does not stand next to the, to the, to the um, husband. According to the myth of Abu Hanifa that invalidates the prayer of both, according to the majority, Shaf Iman and Ahmed, it's still makruh. It doesn't invalidate, but it's still makruh. And the sunnah is that women stand, uh, stand behind. Kama Allah. That's what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said. Have them placed back as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala required. So that's, that's how the jama'ah should see. So husband and wife should not stand together. If there's only husband and wife, they should not stand together. She should, she should stand the row behind. Right? Is it like physically behind? Or like one row behind? Yeah, one row behind. It could, be, yeah, could, be, could be on the side. Or, could or be. The other is always to be directly behind. Allahu <laughs> Anna. Mashallah, that was a very good question. Yeah, um, thank you. So we are, we've had the first caller from a six-year-old, brothers and sisters. Let's see if someone can beat the six-year-old with another call. Um, the number to call is 0151-260-3986. We had a very, um, very interesting and a very informative uh, khutbah today by Sheikh Harun. Do you just want to uh, summarize in 30 seconds what this was? It's about reading Quran. You know, we read Quran and we read it as though we're reading it for the sake of reading it, but not understanding it or not even having that emotional feeling that we're reading the book of Allah and we're connecting to Allah and that has gone from us. So what can, say a little bit about what you said and then say how can people put that into implementation, into practice? Well, no, they should have what all been listening to the khutbah. <laughs> I know, but there are some who may have been at work, Sheikh. And no, it's, uh, fine, it's about the repetition, the isn't it? The yeah. Sheikh's job is to repeat, repeat, repeat so that it gets oh, into our head. Yeah. I'm one of those, unless repeated, I don't get it in my job. 
in my head. Well, the khut- the the hadith he said is one of the scariest hadiths. Yes, it is. It's, 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 it's very, very important, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, it it really shook my head, and I thought, ah, oh, I never thought of that. That when I'm reading it, I have to read with you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as I'm connected to talking to me, and and that brings emotions, and also try to understand what you're reading is very important. Sorry, I'm not taking. Oh no no no. Because you've heard it, I heard it. I know, but I was just reading from the book. <laughs> you're, the, you're the better orator. Uh, no. and, and, and well, this is not orator, orator time. This is, not, this is just have a little you, chat. You'll, you'll say it in a better way. Yeah. Okay, then, Bismillah. We'll Bismillah. just mention the hadith itself. Yes, of course. Where the Prophet said, um, in the last day, a, a, a group of people appear. Um, and that was the beginning part. I was worrying. The young people. Yeah. So I didn't say in the translation Sufaha al-Ahlam just means they're idiots Like a Safi is like Ahmaq He's just an idiot Safi um, So in their understandings they're idiots Like they got no understanding of, of the Haq um, And then the Prophet This is the, this is the, this is the, the terrifying bit He said يقرأون, يعني من خير قول They speak the best of all words And they speak Qala Rasulullah, Qala Rasulullah. They always quote in hadith and drop in hadith, but they don't have no understanding of it. And then he says, Yaqra'oon al-Qur'an la yijawuz ahanajirahum. Subhanallah. They read the Qur'an, but it doesn't pass the throat. It doesn't enter the, into their heart. It has no effect upon them. So that was it. It's just like, alhamdulillah, uh, we come to the masjid, we pray, we... We dress up as well, mashallah. We dress up, we wear all the nice thobes and so on, we wear the nice the nice hats. But the reality is like when did we cry when we read the Quran? Yes. Like, when did true. we go into sujood and start begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ya Latif. So it's yeah, it's a powerful message. I didn't really go on to <laughs> I didn't go on to the end part. Okay. <laughs> if you meet them, kill them. <laughs> we'll leave that. We'll leave that. We'll leave, the, we'll leave that. So but it's, it's true, Sheikh, as, as a reflection, what I felt from it is uh, after the khutbah, I felt like it's saying to us, SubhanAllah Al-Azim, even though you will be doing the khair, even you'll be the imam, you'll be a qari and that. Mm. It's like to think all of that that you've done in this dunya can just go if your niyyah is seconds. not there in the yeah. right place. And that's why yeah. always the dua of always when you do something good, always make a dua for yourself that you're, you intend to do it for Allah's sake. And uh, Allah That's ta'ala. also why we have the Sunnah of the Prophet after your salah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Yeah. I do Astaghfirullah straight away because uh, your intention is probably yeah. not good. There's another one you, you, I know a long time ago you said uh, the dua to do is Astaghfirullah. Then is it what to be or la hawla wa la So could you repeat that again? That, that's that, that was what the Prophet would do after the revelation surah al Nasr. Sabbih bihamdi rabbik wa astaghfir. So that's like, and it's important now because we know a lot of people dying. Yeah. So like the question comes, uh, I've got a family member who's dying in a few days. What's the advice? He said, do what the Prophet Sallallahu did. He was told by Allah that he was leaving the world mm-hmm. and his dhikr was, Astaghfirullah al-Azim. No, I found, Subhanallah bihamdi, Astaghfirullah al-Azim wa atubu ilayhi. And that's all he, uh, and in some of his wives, he said, when he'd stand up, he'd say that. When he'd walk, he'd say that. When he'd sit down, he'd say that. And he said, yata'awwal al-Quran. And he was acting upon the Quran because Allah told him to do that. Sabbih bihamdi rabbika wa astaghfir. So you know somebody who's dying, only got like days or maybe a week or so left, <laughs> just advise him. That's the dhikr that Allah <laughs> ordered the Prophet <laughs> to do, and the Prophet <laughs> was also doing. Just repeat that one more time for our viewers, Shaykh. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi astaghfirullah al azim wa atubu ilayh. Allah so shall we go through the questions now? Yes, let's take some of the questions. Ahmed yeah. Al-Naim, me first one. Uh, so yeah. Ahmed Al-Naim, mashallah, he's a he's a diehard red, mashallah. mashallah. Ahmed, we're gonna destroy the we're gonna destroy the oh, score yeah, when they come down on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I haven't been following the league. Uh, is Liverpool still on top? Oh, oh, I yes, United. <laughs> Hamza, are you are you a United supporter? Yes. <laughs> yes. Our production director oh, is the United. He wins. Did you not even know that? No, I didn't know that. Did <laughs> that do you quiet. think I'll be on this show if you did? No, no, no. I want him shot, man. I want him shot. No, no, we no. I want him shot. <laughs> Until we'll do even worse we'll than that. Be United fan as a cameraman, here. <laughs> Chef. Oh, right. No, 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 There's no, no, another no. one there. Okay. No, no, no. This is the virus that needs to be cleansed out of the market. <laughs> I tell you, what, we, United I tell you what, he was he was born in Liverpool, so we'll change in his birth certificate to Manchester yeah, United. <laughs> you Manchester. know what it was? He was born in the era where Fergie and United were winning everything. That's what Glory it was. Glory hunters, innit? Yeah, proper Glory, Glory hunters, them. So right. yeah, so 
Ask us next week who's top of the league, guaranteed. It's okay, us. right. It's no, us. I'll, 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 I'll do that. Ahmed uh, Naeem, inshallah, we're going to win. We're going to win on Sunday. Yeah. So he's also wearing a red, a red jumper yeah. as well. No, Can you imagine he's a that? Red, man. He's a dad, um, man. I know really it's on good. Facebook. There's a, there's a message. Many of you are actually sending your messages on Facebook. Jazakumullah khair. Please continue to send your messages. If you find the line is busy, that because we are on the call. Yeah. So why don't you call the number now? It's it's actually, no, we're not we're not busy at this moment. So take up the opportunity to call 015 one two six zero three nine eight six and ask the happy sheikh any questions you may have covid related or religious or even a worldly one that you want to ask um brother muhammad bashir says salamu alaikum sheikh is your salah accepted if you don't understand what you are reciting i mean many of us don't understand what we're reciting first of all no no first of all there's an important thing to mention on that there's a difference between what's termed the sahat al-salah wa qabool al-salah there's a world of difference. Is the prayer valid and correct? Has it been accepted by Allah? Mm-hmm. Um, nobody can answer the question, is it accepted by Allah? Nobody except for Allah can ask, answer that. All we're concerned, first and foremost, is to make sure we pray and write. And that also means read it. Um, but there's no short, that, uh, no condition that any of the imams stated that you oh, must understand what you're Sorry reading. to interrupt, Sheikh. Oh. Take the call. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as-salam, Mufti Oh, this is that Imam Hussain from Nottingham. MashaAllah. I told you, I didn't tell you to call in, mate. Who said you can call in? <laughs> you, you've been trolling me all week. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just get my own back on now. Uh, <laughs> I've been trolling him on Facebook all week. Hey, um, what was what was your khutbah about today? Signs of the end of times. Just finish off the my, minor signs. Inshallah, I'm going to do the Mahdi next week. Ajeev, we're on the same. We, we, yeah. I don't know, next week might be the Mahdi or might be the minor signs again, but we're, we're doing the same yeah, here. Yeah, because you copy me, obviously, because I'm the uh, imam of your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> sure, go. Go, what are you asking, Sheikh Waddah? He's no, the Sheikh, Sheikh Harun. Right. What I want, I want to know is, that, uh, are there any weak hadith in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari? And what do we say to the people who attack the Sahih of Imam Bukhari and Imam Bukhari himself? Boy, these are really technical boy, questions, question, aren't they? These are for the, for the sheikhs, isn't it, yeah, themselves? He's, he's an imam, that's why. Yeah. Right. First of all, um, in Sahih al-Bukhari, um, you have two different levels. You have what's called al-furu' or al-usul. You have like the introductory ahadith, and then you have the main ahadith. Um, <laughs> ah, Zain, I know when Dr. Javid says, Sheikh Waddah reminds me of that sitcom bread when he speaks. He means the Scouse accent. He's on there, he knows. He knows. Uh, what the fuck are you yeah. That's a compliment. That, that's, that's pure 80s, that is. That tells you how old he is. Bread was like, he was, have you watched it? No, I've never seen none of them. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah that, do you remember that? Bread. Go, yeah. on, go on YouTube, Bread. It's what, sitcom Bread? Is it comedy? Yeah, or? it's a comedy. Ah, inshallah. That's the time I've heard. It was the 80s. It was the 80s. Okay. I must yeah. have missed it. Yeah. What, what's no, this stop? Stop getting the sidetrack. Answer the question. No, no, stop no. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. Yeah, yeah. So. So, in terms of the main hadith of each of verb, of each section, there is, no, there is no weak hadith. However, there are some of the fuqaha who said that the hadith in Al-Bukhari is da'if. What they meant by that is ghayr ma'mool bihi. We don't act in accordance with it. We, um, it's not da'if in terms of sanad. It's in terms of amal. Like we don't necessarily act upon every hadith that exists within Sahih Al-Bukhari. And, and there's quite a few examples of that. So, when some, particularly the Hanafi fuqaha, when they said weak, they meant غير معمول به that we don't act in accordance with it. But in يعني مقدمة الباب in the introduction you do have some ahadith that are weak that Imam Al Bukhari indicates by saying قيلة روية he himself and these are what are called uh, what's it called موقوفات no uh, Allah مسلي I forgot uh, مقطع no I forgot the name. Mu'allaqat, Mu'allaqat al-Bukhari Where Imam al-Bukhari doesn't mention the Sanad, the chain He just introduces with a hadith without the full chain So sometimes you'll say it was said or he, it was related That itself is Imam al-Bukhari indicating that it is weak But Imam al-Suyuti in al-Tadrib, Tadrib al-Rawi He says but by al-Bukhari doing that and he stipulated authenticity He said it means it's not shadid al-Da'af, it's not severely weak Allah, That's ma'roof, that, that discussion is well known the, the mo- yani modern Muslims now who are attacking Al-Bukhari, they have an agenda. They have an agenda. One of my, one of my Mashaykh, Sheikh Samar al-Nas, Hafizahullah ta'ala, 
He said historically the likes of Imam Adar Qutni or you know, the great Imams of Hadith, they did criticize certain Hadith. He said, but these were Imams of Hadith of the highest level, they were entitled to do that. He said, now, he said, you got people coming forward and criticizing Bukhari and they know nothing about Hadith. So Imam Hussein, if anybody does start to shut him down, Straight up, you, you can't even get into discussion because you'll ask him one or two simple questions about hadith and he hasn't got a clue and he's criticized Imam al-Bukhari. Mm. We're not saying Imam al-Bukhari is ma'asum. We're not saying he couldn't have made a mistake, but the ummah has accepted Sahih al-Bukhari as, as a reference source. So we accept it. Wallahu an. Allah that, that got a bit too deep, that, didn't it? Yes, yeah, so I yeah. think, I think so, we can take it out on a personal level, can't you? Yeah, so the phone call. Imam Hussain, go away. Don't call again with questions. No, but it is what you say. Jazakallah khair and peace out. Jazakallah khair, Imam Hussain. Listen, oh, he's no, he's got, I was going to invite him to the show. He's in Nottingham. Oh, right, he's in... Well, okay. You can't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't travel if you don't have to. Um, there's a question here. Uh, I can't no, read I the name of the person. Was gonna say no, no, but it was just about the ijtihad that you were saying about the ulama. Like, we, we have it loads of time that like you're saying lo- so many people will go into schools and stuff and learn a few, two years, and they'll start doing naqd, you know, into yeah. big imams, where they've done ijtihad. Once you become, you do the same ijtihad as a alim that you become, yeah. then you're able to look and accept. Then you still don't have the right to yeah. intiqad anyone else through there we that. go, the next caller is here Sheikh Wadda, play the call please Hello, Assalamu Alaikum Assalamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullah Who is calling? Uh, Hamza from Lancaster Hamza from Manchester, Ahlan Lancaster. Lancaster Oh this is Hamza Lomas, Lomas. Hamza Lomas, how are you doing mate? How's your dad? Um, good yeah, thank you I was requested to call last week you can answer my question about artificial intelligence. Yeah, I remember the question about artificial intelligence. It was about putting brain chips in, right? Yeah. You're going to have to call back next week because um, I've, I've looked a bit into it, but it's it's an area which is relatively new, and even the ulama and the imams fatwa, it's a new discussion with them. So I, I need to look into it more before we can give you the definite answer. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Hamza? Yeah. How, how old is Hamza? Are you, are you nine? Oh, uh, yeah, Jazakallah. Yeah. Wow. No, so Hamza, that means you have to call again next week. Keep on putting pressure All on right. me until I get you an answer. Hamza, also, also, why don't you call into uh, our um, talent show? Every Thursday, it starts at 6 o'clock or just after 6 until 7.30. And you can recite or you can do a nasheed or you can do any talent that you may have. Do you do nasheed? Just, yeah, you can. You ask, can him, uh, ask him. Hamza, do you, do you sing nasheed? Um, no. No, but you can recite Quran or, um, or you, you can send us an art or calligraphy. Um, a recitation would be fine. Every Thursday, yeah? Will you ring that every Thursday between 6 and 7.30? Inshallah, you will do. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair and Hamza. We'll Thank you. We'll speak yeah, to you next week, inshallah. 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 Give salam to your dad for us, please. MashaAllah, Jazakumullah khair. So we're getting uh, calls from children more than adults here. Where are you, adults? Let's see if you Do we have a lot of people online? Yes. Yes, let's just go to the questions. Uh, let's, go Hamza. Back to that um, just let's go back to the original one. The original one was so Muhammad about Bashir, yes, salam, except if is your salah accepted? So just to clarify that point, there's a difference between, between saha and qabul. Like you cannot go to any alim and say, "Is my prayer accepted? Is my mm. fast?" That's Allah who will tell you that. Yeah. And Allah Himself says, "Inna yatakabbalullahu min al-muttaqin." Allah only accepts from people of taqwa. So is my pr- the real question? Is my prayer valid? Is my prayer valid? And yes, no faqih, no alim has ever said it's a condition for the validity of your prayer that you need to understand what you're saying. We do encourage that you try and learn, like Allah, subhanak Allah, alhamdika, al-fatiha. Learn, even if, you, even if you don't understand Arabic, at least learn the meanings of these so you have, you have like a greater feeling. Mm, absolutely. But your fr- prayer is not rejected. Oh. Or it's not invalid because you don't understand it. And people should be careful. Like, don't create like barriers stopping people coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody's not able to understand, Abu Jahl understood, Abu Lahab understood, what difference did it make? Yeah. Like, these well, are the worst of kafir. So, so is your salah accepted? Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Is your salah valid? Yes. Is it accepted by Allah? There are people who understand every word of what they're saying and, and the salah may not be accepted. Because like they're insincere, they're arrogant. We have a so call, Allah. Sheikh Harun, please. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, fuck yourself. Oh, fuck 
yourself. Ah. Okay, so we got a let's disruptive go. caller. Let's go to the Chef Wanda will deal with that after the show. Yeah. Um, yes. Trace the number uh, the common forum. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to the next one. Right, screen the numbers, Hamza, before you bring it to us. Okay, the next, next one is, um, uh, can we say, may Allah bless you and protect you to a non-Muslim? Suleiman Darwish, Masha. He's okay. the one who comes on and sings. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. The Suleiman, Suleiman, phone in towards the end. We, we need a nasheed from you, Shah. That's it, that's it, yes. Um, it depends on what your niyyah is. May, may Allah bless you. And what does barakah mean? Barakah means kathrat al khair. It means kathrat al khair. It means a lot of good. Uh, in terms of dunya. Can okay, you can you take the call, call privately and then switch it on? So okay. Avon, just to answer the question. So can we say, may Allah bless you and protect you to a non-Muslim? If you're as intention in terms of dunya, then yes. Baraka kathrat al khair. May Allah increase you in your wealth. May Allah increase. You can say that all for a non-Muslim. May Allah protect you as a non. You can say that, but your niyyah should be so that you may become Muslim. Because the ultimate thing you want for a non-Muslim is that that non-Muslim comes into Islam. Mm. If you mean can um, protect you from hellfire and so on, no, 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 because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he won't do that. Allah wa So, you, sorry, I missed that. So can you say, um, may Allah bless you and protect you to another? Yes, you yes can. you can, but with the niyyah, then it's, it's for dunya. dunya. I protect you in this world, may he bless you, I give you wealth in this world. With the intention that through that, then Allah, he will see... Uh, Allah will open his heart to his okay. But you know what, Sheikh Dagib brings in questions like with people who work with non Muslims as colleagues, they sneeze, they do that. And they've got a thing, they say bless you to each other in a way. Yeah, yeah but they always say God they bless they you. They say uh, bless you in a way. Yeah. What, what do you think is that as Muslims, is, can we say, yeah, we oh, can, bless yeah. you? Yeah, okay. we can. That's really good. Yeah. 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 And with a Muslim, you say, Alhamdulillah, may Allah show you mercy. With a non Muslim, bless you. But bless you doesn't, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't cover because, absolutely because because you're just saying that may protect you may remove that from you if that's your intention yeah. then it's fine. yeah absolutely I just want to remind <coughs> the viewers we have one silly person who's trying to disrupt the calls so if you want to call why don't you just text me uh, or on, on the WhatsApp number there text me the uh, that you are going to call and maybe give us your number we'll call you straight back. That might be the best way. We hardly get this sort of disruption, but there are people up there who are anti-Muslims and are trying to disrupt the show here. So we, obviously they will not succeed. Uh, inshallah, we'll carry on with the show. Brother Muhammad Sarfraz have says, MashaAllah, he's can I just say, ex president can I just of Pakistan Center, I think. Can I just uh, say on that, yeah, even if people call and swear and so on, yeah, it doesn't trouble us because... Sorry, he's the president Sumaisen, of Pakistan, so they're not ex-president. Uh, and Nabi Sumaisen, like they called him everything. He just yes, carried on. He carried so on. So even if they call in and swear and so on... Uh, yeah, it, it makes no difference it, to don't us. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Uh, what's this? Life? Pipe? His name is Aqib. He's a student at Madrasa. Oh, yeah. uh, right, okay. Can you just go back up a bit? There was a point I wanted to touch upon there. Yeah, no, go, go pass before the bread one. There it is, yeah. Bread one. Hassan Mu'in ad please put the reference to Hadith quoted you in the khutbah today. Put the reference, uh, I've got a reference in the book I read from, but it's in Sahih al Bukhari. Hassan Mu'in ad that's a brother from London. He works with, uh, he worked with MCB a lot. Uh, um, one of our community <coughs> leaders, one of the great um, uh, okay. community activists. Uh, so it's thank it's you, brother Hassan Mu'in for your... It's in Sahih al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. It's in Sahih al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. No. Okay. You, yeah. Yeah. MashaAllah. Have you okay. got a call? Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How is it? Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Salam. Who is this? Brother Suleiman. Uh, brother Muhammad. No, is, that, is that Brother Suleiman or Brother Muhammad? Muhammad. Okay. Um, okay. There's loads of Muhammad. <laughs> Which Muhammad is it? <laughs> Have we lost Muhammad Jibreel. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, Brother Muhammad, give, uh, if you don't want to give your surname, uh, what is your question to the Sheikh? Please go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, how do you build spirituality and how do you keep yourself clean? How do you build uh, spirituality? And how do you, uh, how do you, how do you keep clean from, from what? Like, like bad thoughts and like, just keep yourself clean physically and spiritually. Kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Taqullahu kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Keep the company of people of goodness. They will, they will affect you. They will. And when you say spiritual, that like you want to become a better Muslim, you want to raise your, 
you're standing in Islam, people around you have such an effect on you. And Nabi said, المَرْءُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِهِ فَلْيَنظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ A person is on the religion, his deen. Your deen is the deen of your closest friend. If your closest friend is somebody who's not, mashallah, spiritual and he genuinely is a pure person, that's going to rub off onto you. That, that will change you. So look at those around you. Try to, try to keep the company the best of people. Try it. And inshallah ta'ala, some change will come, come your way. Allah Brilliant. Allah. Exactly, that's a very good question. Actually. It was it was a deep question as well because I think uh, you meant more about um, your me- mental health state. Like when someone, how do you get bad thoughts off your head? So people do just go through trouble. They've gone traumatized through certain situations, but they keep getting bad thoughts in the head. How do they cleanse? What can they do, Sheikh? To Muhammad, are you still on? He's gone. gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Latif. And he, if he's only got mental health problems and dealing with trauma. I don't want to say anything now because there are people who specialize in dealing with that. And you should always refer to people who have expertise within the area. So if that's what's meant, like trauma, somebody suffering trauma um, somebody and, and getting really bad negative thoughts, you need, to get, you need to get some type of treatment for that. And then, inshallah, once it's brought under control, then, then uh, yeah, and we, we have all of the medicines. We have Quran, we have Sunnah. We have all of these type of medicines with dhikr, dua, and so on. But if you've been through a bad experience, you need to first go and get that dealt with, and and then these things can have an effect. Allah, Allah, Allah. I don't I don't want to speak about that because it's sure, not. Sure, sure, no, absolutely not. Allah I think Allah. The, the the best thing to do, the, my own personal um, um, opinion would be is to is to be humble with yourself, and like Sheikh Harun says, be with the company of the best people around you sure. because ne- no matter how positive you are um, you are, if you're with the negative people sooner or later you'll join the crowd but if you're with the pious and the good people people of good habit then you'll definitely pick it up so so it's your company of the people that you're with that makes a difference but if you're suffering deep inside uh, always do zikr of Allah and and always say you are I am a person Allah has created me for a purpose what is the goodness in me that I can bring to others and myself and go that, speak that to will someone. that will really change you and speak to someone that's the best thing that you can yeah. do speak is to go there's nothing yeah. stopping you going to a mosque phone in in a mosque if you're not allowed yeah. at these times going into the imam because each person is different each state is different, so there's a way of you, when you speak to someone, you let go of many things, you let it out with them, and especially when you talk to someone who's in the mosque, who's someone with a religious purpose behind them, they can guide you in a way, yeah, alhamdulillah, absolutely, inshallah, absolutely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of guides. True, true, there's some questions there, Sheikh, would you like to... Okay, so Aqib, mashallah, Aqib, he's from Oxford, he's from oh, right. mashallah, really, a great <laughs> student. Um, Hamza, um, it's about to die, low battery, whatever, but on the screen there says low battery. <laughs> okay, uh, well, the, the just well, off. Well, 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 so yeah, there we are. We're also controlling the <laughs> technical side as well. He's just taking pictures, that's why. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. So, how so, do we protect ourselves from evil eye when nowadays for business or personal profile slash brand and vis- It's gone. Oh, okay. And visibility of our skills is very beneficial. Um, no, al aynu haq, the evil eye is real. Um, and it does harm people. And that's why people need to be is careful. Is there a thing called evil eye? Absolutely. The Prophet wow. oh, spoke course, about okay. it so much. I didn't know um, that. And, and just understand what the evil eye is. Yes. It's, it's like a hidden type of hasad, with, a hidden type of envy within the hearts of people. That when they start seeing people getting goodness, uh, when they start seeing people with a lot of wealth and other type of skills and so on, without even realizing people can harm and affect others. There are many different ways of dealing with that. One of them, particularly when you're speaking about... Bi- Afwan, I was also going to mention, now everybody, everybody's in the habit of promoting everything about themselves. That's what social media is about. Mm. Just put yourself That's out true, there yeah. and even displaying your personal life even down to what you're eating and what you're wearing and so on. Like, I've got a Facebook account. I never, ever put anything personal about my life in it. Like my kids and so on. Yeah. Because I mean, when you're always in, in the eyes of people, somebody's a hassid without even realising it. Somebody without even re- realizing will have some type of envy towards you and that can harm you. Mm. So there's different ways. So one, limit your exposure. public exposure except where you need to do so. I'll give an example of that and this is for the ladies and the couples. Um, when you're pregnant, like what happens now, they'll take the little pictures of the baby in there and they just spread it everywhere. Mm. Even before the baby's born, you've exposed them to the ayin. I, it's so common that now And yes You're happy And you want to share it With people and so on But share it with your loved ones 
don't just put it out there on your profiles and everything. Then the people have some real evil in their hearts start affecting your baby even before the baby's born. That's one that gets me in particular. Like you're exposing your children even before they're born to harm, to, to ain. So be careful with this. Don't, don't just try and promote yourself just for the sake of it. A lot of that's just about ego. It's about nefs. But in terms of practical protection, um, and one with business in particular, business, make a point of always giving sadaqah. Sadaqah, giving sadaqah is one of the most powerful ways of protecting your wealth. Your wealth. Um, and health, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Health as well. Wealth is never lost by giving. The more you give, you want to protect your wealth, business and stuff, just give some sadaqah, make it as a regular habit, and that's protection. Also read the Ad'iyat and Nabi and the Prophet gave dua, and I'll mention one, which is from the Sunnah of the Prophet to read in the morning. Allahumma ma asbaha bi min ahadin, Allahumma ma asbaha bi min ni'matin, aw bi ahadin min khalqika, fa minka wahdaka la sharika lak. Oh Allah, any ni'mah, any blessings that I wake up in the morning with, or anybody in your creation, and it's from you alone, you have no partner. That's, that's a powerful protection from, from the evil eye. Wallahu That's really good. Great question from Afghan. It's, it's Great a question, question, question mashallah. Yeah, I mean, I was saying today in the, in, in the Juma in the announcement, Sheikh, is that <laughs> in a, when you come to Friday mosque, everybody pays some money on a regular basis. Yeah. That is sadaqah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. while the mosques are in a lockdown, but whether they are locked down or not, so maybe as a general practice, why don't people put a choice of their masjid, I'm not saying do it to Abdullah Kulla masjid, but it would be great. It's at a minimum of, say, let's say, five pounds, which is less than a pound a week, yeah. a day. Um, set a, you know, every Friday, transfer that five pounds with the near that this is sadaqah to protect you and your family for the sake of Allah. Try that as, um, a, as a practice, you know, you every, every week. Or you can set up a standing order every Friday that it goes out. Just take a back up, yeah? Sorry, Alfred. No, that's fine. Just take a back up, there was a question before that. That was a good question. Just before that one, that, Adam Hart, yeah, Adam yeah. Hart. He had the question, you remember he had the question about his dad um, hunting deer? Yes, absolutely. But he didn't I call in. I think he's that. gotten sensible now. He's, he's asking sensible <laughs> questions. Um, the Give next thing would be, can we, can we hunt uh, something else? Sure. <laughs> Do you want to read this question? Yes. It's interesting. Is it impossible to break down, uh, lo- sorry, is it impossible to break lockdown rules? I visit my family and friends regularly. Uh, the next bit he says, I don't she think Bojo down. knows Bojo what he's doing. Boris Johnson, yeah? Uh, That's a nickname, yeah. Okay, he knows what come he's on, doing. Come on, you got to stay and with the time. Bojo is loving Boris Loving the Johnson. response to the prank <laughs> call. Okay, so he's got three parts to it though, hasn't he? So um, forget about the last bit. Um, no, it's only one. It's only one. Okay. It's a haram to break lockdown rules. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna, I, we're going to raise you to rank of Mufti. You answer the question. Okay. Now, you should not be breaking the rules. <laughs> I wouldn't go somewhere that is haram. <laughs> uh, it is, uh, uh, what I would say is something that harms people, you should not do it. That is the rule. So but he's question. asking a question, but then he's telling us he's already breaking it. Do you know what I mean? I like, no, no, so that's so invalid. Inshallah, to give him the benefit of the doubt, he's saying I should have stopped doing that. Mm. Yeah. Can, I, can I give a quick example on that one? You know when you say, I visit my family and friends regularly, you re- literally are putting those people you love at risk. Because I'll tell you what, during the Christmas break many of our people many of my own family extended family visited people in london different parts of the city what we are finding now is the loved grandchildren who went there and somehow they infected their grandmother grandfather uncles and aunts and there's been about two deaths within my own extended family and as a result of the covid so many many deaths are happening in london in, in all over the country i would say and ethnic as ethnic minority we're more vulnerable to this virus so therefore by visiting people who are not in your same bubble, you're literally putting them at harm, at risk of lives. So please don't. If you love them, you will phone, make the phone call. If you, you have to visit them, keep two meter distance and say, Assalamu alaikum, Nan, I'm going home. I can see you. That's it. So, Adam, yeah. there's your answer. Yep. There's your answer. I knew he was going to give that spiel. I knew that. That was an announcement before the whole thing. It was, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think more needs to be said. Please don't think this virus is a I joke. This virus is nothing. It is a hidden killer. And it is killing people in front of our eyes, Sheikh. Mm. I mean, my own relations are going. Many of my friends' relations are going. Yours is going. I'm sure those people who are watching us. And you should take it seriously. You know, yeah. Don't okay. go near it. Protect yourself and your... Uh, and of course about the vaccination, don't forget to vaccinate yourself. You know, give a ruling on that. Many people think, oh, this vaccination oh. is going to this, that and the other. What, what's a simple answer to that? Should um, they or yeah, should they not? I'm not giving like a fatwa or anything like no. that, but 
Yeah, I think people should do. Uh, and I, I said this previously, I'm, I'm going to. And even though people got all of these conspiracy theories and the, uh, um, the va- people need to get vaccinated, simple as. People yeah. need to do that. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I've spoken to many, many consultant doctors um, <coughs> before I gave my job uh, three weeks ago. Have you had both? Uh, well, no, I haven't had the both because I think they run out of Pfizer. <laughs> I did the Pfizer time. I, should, I wish I waited for the Oxford one. Maybe that would have been more widely available. But I think Oxford one is brilliant. Yeah, AstraZeneca uh, is good. Talk to your GP, go to your local chemist, pharmacist, and they are doing it. Uh, it's been rolled out throughout the country. Please, please, doesn't matter. If you get the opportunity, get the job fast. If you've got elderly in your house, call your GP, your doctor, and ask for an appointment. They will do the signpost you to the right place, inshallah. Getting the job in this day and age is absolutely paramount, brothers and sisters. So if you have any questions, you can always call us on the number, even after the show. I can take your calls, ask the sheikh, and get back to you. That's the service that we will provide, inshallah. But don't forget to give some sadaqah to the masjid who, who are closed and make a regular sadaqah five pound every week every friday as your sadaka your investment for the yom al qiyama that's the most important thing okay. so i think we have a very good question from danish jabbar it says how can you stop jealousy or envy from taking root in your heart that's a question for you yes, it's a great question mm. um mashallah imam and nawi rahimahullah ta'ala he speaks about and many others have spoken about this to stop and en- the disease of envy and jealousy, he says, is ultimately that you're not happy. It's Adam al rida bi qada illa. You're not happy with the with the, the, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Like if you're wealthy, or if if, you, if your neighbor's wealthy and you're not, ultimately, that's the qada of Allah subhanahu. Wa that's the that's the will of Allah subhanahu wa taala. If, for example, okay, he's a alim and you're not, and you're feeling envious about him, ultimately, that's the qada of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give something that he's not giving you. So when you're feeling jealous and envious, in reality, your problem is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your problem is really against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, over, so to overcome envy and jealousy, just always be in a state of thanks to Allah subhanahu for what he's given you. Mm-hmm. What he's given you. Just always be in a state of shukr lillahi ta'ala. Always just keep on moving your tongue. That Allah subhanahu is the one who's decided that I get this and he gets that. And if he wants to give me that, then it's, 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 his, it's his choice. So remember that. أَهُمْ يَقْسِمُونَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّكْ نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَةٌ Are they the ones who are going to distribute out their the livelihood? We're the ones who distributed out amongst them. So just الرِّضَى بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكْ Just be happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided for you. تَكُنْ أَغْنَ النَّاسِ You'll be the wealthiest of all people. Allah. Great question though. Yep. Very, very good question. Well, there's Danish. a shaykh by Imam Shafi when he says, um, أَيَا حَاسِدًا لِي فِي نَعْمَتِي أتعلم على من أسأت الأدب أسأت على الله في حكمه لأنك لن ترضى لي ما وهب just to be translate the the translation of what exactly what you said we've got a question as well that's being texted over and it says um, anonymous um, can I have advice on spells and how to protect myself and family last year my husband uh, came back from a visit from his homeland and he had a spell with it in his pocket basically Oh right, yeah. like a Amazing. physical spell that like you can get. Jadu, yeah, jadu, yeah. jadu, yeah, black real. magic. Sihar. It's real. Are you believe um, in that? For, oh, okay. I'll once, if he's, you know, so, so to be clear here, like a spell is like jadu, it's like or sihar, it's magic that's been written on something. If it's confirmed that it is that, and it is general protections like ayat al kursi and al muawwidatain, and there's general protections from the Quran and from the Sunnah. But once you have something confirmed, you need to go to Iraqi. You must go to Iraqi. You must go to somebody who knows how to deal with it. Don't start opening it. To unlock it. it. Yeah, to treat it, yeah. You must go to Iraqi. You must go to somebody, <coughs> again, who has expertise within that. And one thing, like we spoke before about mental health problems and so on, and this, and it, uh, any imam or any alim sh- shouldn't start speaking about things that are outside of his remit. Like the Iraqi is the one who has the expertise in this. He deals with that, so go to him. So go to him and inshallah he will. But the problem is, you got a lot of fakes out there. That's a problem. Yes. Like those who deal with like Jadu, Sihar and black magic and stuff like that. There's a lot of fakes out there. So and there's, a lot, there's a lot who made a business out of it, proper business. Oh, big, with big, big, no, big, big money. In Morocco, people. everywhere that you go, they yeah. use loads. Of I, I know some. What do you mean, what's the origins? Um, 
Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was لا لا before Sulaiman عليه السلام سامي سليمان بابو so Allah سبحانه وتعالى sent down two angels Harut and Marut to teach um, to teach them teaching them but telling them, the people that they were Jews there telling them that this is um, Sihr is black magic فلا تكفر warning them that we'll teach it to you but if you do you're dealing with kufr hmm? yeah yeah it was a test but Allah SWT sent down two angels to teach the people black magic if they wanted to take it as a test for them to see whether they'll believe it or not they failed the test and they took it and, they, and then from there uh, from their black ma- that's, that's when Surah Al-Baqarah Surah Al-Baqarah I think it's verse 102 Surah Al-Baqarah Allah SWT speaks about the origins of black magic Allah MashaAllah that's really good that ayah subhanAllah he's never come and enlightened me like that way you've said it now MashaAllah again like you said to overcome that is to read Ayat Al-Qursi more often general yeah and, and okay. What's the, there's one verse in particular um, for, for it's in Surah Yunus for the Sahara. Mm-hmm. there's one particular verse in Surah Yunus which is mentioned I'll find the verse which says okay. every night before going to sleep if you have fear of sihr um, you should read it that's, I'll important. Find it. that's an important one <coughs> yeah okay we'll find that for you dear that. viewers uh, brothers sisters if you are watching you're watching ask the happy sheikh um, please do call in to the best thing is to call in so it's a, it's, it's a direct interaction with yourselves and the imams here the number to call is 0151-260-3986 we'd like to hear you asking the questions direct but Jazakumullah khairan many of you are on Facebook who are watching us and also giving your questions um, is, is much appreciated. But why don't you call in um, and, and ha- hear from the Sheikh what they have to say about can your share, questions? Of course. Verse? Please, please. So, and if somebody fears Sihr, black magic, Jadu, um, Surah Yunus, verse 81. فَلَمَّا أَلْقَوْ قَالَ مُوسَى مَا جِئْتُمْ بِهِ السِّحْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَيُبْطِلُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُصْلِحُ عَمَلَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Surah Yunus, verse 81. And Surah Yunus is Surah number 10. Before you go to sleep, read the ayah. At least once, read it. فَلَمَّا أَلْقَوْ قَالَ مُوسَى مَا جِئْتُمْ بِهِ السِّحْرِ That when they threw their, uh, their little sticks down, Musa says, what you've brought is, is, is sihr. Allah will cancel it. Allah will, will stop it. Allah, and that's the key. إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَيُبْطُلِ Allah will not let it cause any harm to come. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُصْلِحَ عَمِلَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Mashallah, barakallah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do you know one one of the things that I learned from yeah. some in back in the eighties, a pretty young guy. Do we have a call? Yeah, let's take the call. Sheikh Wadda. Hello, assalamu alaikum, caller. Ah, the caller got dropped. Okay, if you uh, if you uh, the caller your call got dropped, so please call back again, inshallah. You know, talk about the jealousy, the greedy. I want to share three things that I, I was reading a book. It says twenty three steps to success, and um, and I've never completed read the whole books, but there were three steps that I actually memorized and I practiced uh, without thinking the implication. And and those three ones were it says yeah you know not to be jealousy not to be greedy and not to envy people. And those three th- things that I actually practiced during my lifetime. And 20 years later, I found out that it's also in Islam. It says, if you, if you practice those three things, you are pure as white, as milk. You know, it's so envy, it's, your heart is as pure as milk. It's I mean, envy what do you say about that, that Sheikh? You know, yeah. those three things. All I say is that you shouldn't have been reading that book. You should have read the Quran. I know. I was. I was. Uh, uh, I tell you what. I, I, I was about 18 years old. You see, and 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 wasn't connected that much. I mean, I used to read Quran every day uh, for, from childhood, and that's how I memorized Surah Yasin and Surah Rahman and and so forth when I was in but school. But you know, you know one but thing about that. Though, you know what it tells you. Alhamdulillah, reading Quran is always great. Um, but we need people to tell people the meanings of the Quran and the Surah. Yes, absolutely. Because. You go and find these answers in books about 23 steps to being successful. It's all there. Yeah. We, we One step, say la ilaha illallah, illallah and you'll get it yes, straight away. Yes, yes, yes. Never mind 23 steps. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's because you know, need one step. I mean, I couldn't remember what were the 23 steps. I think it was a book by De- Del I'll Carnegie. You, they're, they're all uh, somewhere in the sun. It was a book by Del Carnegie, actually, you know, Del the Carnegie. famous writer. Del yeah. And, and, and the three steps actually did help me throughout my life where I didn't have to have big arguments with people, fight with people. You find a way to go around it, and envy, enviness, greediness, and jealousy are the are the poisons that's in your heart, in your mind that doesn't make you grow. So if you can take those three things out of you, I can guarantee you from my own experience that you'll be a happy person in this dunya, and you'll be a happy person to everyone around you. You will change yourselves. 
and well, it, but it's it's sad that most of the questions and all it's all to do with um, yeah. hasad, envy, and yeah. stuff like that. Subhanallah, the nature of people. Okay, there's a question <laughs> from uh, Sister Sarah. Are we getting a call? As if we get the call, will they'll put us through? Um, yeah. says, can you speak about promoting harmony in a household? We are seeing an increase. In arguments and divorces in households during lockdown, is it shaitan or the Not ego? Do we have a call? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. MashaAllah, who is this? Your name, please? It's uh, Yusuf. My name is Yusuf from Lancaster. Oh, Yusuf, this is Yusuf Lomas, the father. Oh, the father of. We, ha- we had son Lomas. before, now we got father. How are you doing, Yusuf? You okay? Alhamdulillah, not too bad, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Do you want to share some words of wisdom for us? I have no wisdom to share, Sheikh. That's uh, <laughs> me coming to you. MashaAllah. Zakallah yeah. for, for calling in. So, do you have a question or you just want to have a chat? <laughs> we're all good if you want to have a chat. We're all good as well. <laughs> uh, by the way, we're all reds too, so think about the mm, question. Yeah, the cameraman, I'm not happy with him. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> go, on. Him the cameraman. go on, Yusuf, what's, what's your question? You'll have to beat him to get to. Um, get it's just a quick one, Sheikh. Um, so, throughout the UK, a lot of mosques are closed at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I think the same applies to Liverpool, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, locally, uh, the, the masjid is still open, regardless of uh, national lockdown regulations because it doesn't restrict them yeah i'm just wondering basically on a personal level <clears throat> we feel a little bit uh concerned about going to the masjid and joining the salah with jama'ah especially uh jumma prayer because it's so busy um are we okay just to pray though at home in this situation um first of all just to let you know that mashallah um yusuf was involved in setting up yusuf was it the first masjid in lancaster the third message in Lancaster. Well, Mashallah is involved with one of the Masajid oh, in Lancaster. Mashallah. Um, simple answer is yes. Yes, because Khauf into Shar al Maral, um, the fear of spread of sickness, is a valid reason not to pray Jumu'ah. Um, so, yeah, you're absolutely fine to pray Dhuhr at home. Um, and especially because right now, because um, you're saying it's busy there, it shouldn't really be busy at the moment. And also, I don't know, like, are they. Are they controlling it? Are they controlling in a proper manner? Because they're just packing out the masjid as normal. Then that's going to be a problem. Um, and a lot of Muslims, they're they're a bit. I mean, they're willing to take risks on these things, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, pray Zohar. There's absolutely no issue. Up until we get some sense of normality back into our lives, and people are praying Zohar, there's absolutely no issue. Allahu Akbar. Inshallah. Okay, that's, that's a very good just question. A quick fo- very quick follow-on question from that, Sheikh. Um, I heard that that was adab for the Salat al Jum'ah. We shouldn't pray Salat al Jum'ah at home for Dhuhr on a Friday. Is that the is that a thing? See, see, first of all, that's a rule particular to Hanafi Madhab. That rule is only right. particular to the Hanafi Madhab. And secondly, um, that assumes. Uh, yani, the reason behind that rule is so that you don't have any clash with the mess. So just to explain for those who listen what he's talking about, in the Hanafi method alone, if you're praying Dhuhr while a Jumu'ah is taking place, then you should not pray it in Jumu'ah. Everybody should pray by themselves, so it doesn't clash. There should only be Jumu'ah of Jumu'ah taking place in Jumu'ah. That's rule of the Hanafis. But Wallahu alam, I think these, these, are, these are not normal circumstances. So uh, I don't think there's going to be a problem in praying Dhuhr in Jumu'ah. Allahu Akbar. Inshallah. Okay, so the boys can join us. Inshallah. Jazakallah yeah. khair. Remember, remember us in your dua, brother Yusuf. Uh, Hamza, can we go down on this scroll on the Facebook? No, no. Uh, let's go on to that one. Oh, this one. oh, we haven't answered that one, have we? No, we haven't. It's a great Sarah question. Sarah K. Sister Sarah K. has asked a question. Go on, Sheikh. No, I want you to answer it because you're, you're a man of the family and the home and so on. <laughs> can you I'll speak you. about promoting harmony in a household? We we'll see. Where's it gone? Oops. We lost the question. Technology is too fast. No, it's Hamza playing around with (laughs) (laughs) Can you speak about promoting harmony in a household? We're seeing an increase in arguments and divorces in households during lockdown. Is it shaitan or the ego? How does she know the data of that? Uh, That might be interesting to know at some point. It is a fact though. It is a fact fact, though. There's problems at home because the simple thing is that um, it's not normal that families in a home 24-7. It's not not normal. Like the man goes out to work and he comes back in the evening and the woman's doing her thing as well. That's normally how it is. So uh, families and kids are going to school and then everybody's in each other's faces every single moment of time. Um, so it's, it, it is abnormal circumstances. Um, honestly, honestly, and, and I don't 
just, just in the home have halaqat of Quran have halaqa of Quran read surah yasin together in the morning read surah mul together together Quran when you say is it egos is it shaitan it's a bit of all of that it's a bit of all of that shaitan loves to break families and he's got a great chance now because everybody's just like a like caged up at home and then also um Egos are also a wild thing, like nufus, people, husband and wife arguing, kids just screaming at each other all the time, and parents screaming at the kids. Just sit down we and read some we Quran we together. We have a call? That was an answer. Just sit down and read the Quran. It's a good question. I like that question. Okay. So let's take the call. We've got about 10 minutes left before we finish the show. So uh, if, do we have a caller? Okay. Uh, take the show. Sheikh, Sheikh Wadda. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you, Sheikh? Hi, Salam, Rahmatullah. Who am I speaking to? Ijaz. How are you, Ijaz? Ijaz. Ijaz, how are you doing, Ijaz? You okay? Alhamdulillah. Uh, somebody asked me to ask you a question. Uh, he's an old man. He's divorced his wife. And his wife and his kids are abroad. Oh, and uh, he had uh, some property there. Some property, did you say? Yeah, some property, yeah. some houses, and some. But he don't want to give to his kids because he's saying that uh, his kids are his. Their mom is too rich; they have uh, too much money. He want to work off all the property. Can he do it? That's his question. So, what does he want to do with the property? Like, he doesn't want to give it to his kids. Yeah, because his kids have uh, too much money from his mom's side, and um, he want to give. His property as a work to some charity, madrasa, or mosque. Just a simple answer to that. While a person's yeah. alive, you can do whatever you want with your own wealth. You don't need to give it to your kids. Or you want to give it all in sadaqah. You want to give it all away. It's your it's your wealth. It belongs to you. The discussion about not giving it to kids or that's all about um, uh, mirath. That's all about inheritance. So when he's alive, if he wants to give all of his wealth away as a waqf. He's fine to do that, yeah. sadaqah. If, um, but, but also just a, a little side note, he's saying that his, the kids are wealthy because the mother, I mean, your yeah. kids are the, the kids are the father's kids before they're the mother's kids. You, you are the son and daughter of your father. Mother's secondary. Uh, and, and with all, <laughs> all due respect to the women, you are the son. وَعَلَى الْمَوْلُودِ لَهُ رِزْقُهُنَّ وَكِسْوَتُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and to the one that the child is born, meaning the father, the father is, your nesab is through your father, your line is your father. It's not your mother, mother comes Mother comes second. So when he's saying, when he's saying I, they're wealthy through the mother, they're meant to be wealthy through the father, not the mother. So even though maybe he's talking about they're going to go and live with them, the mother and so on. No, they, they already live with the mother and they all have kids, they have families as well. Oh, they're adults. Yeah, they're adults, they're married, they have kids as well. They're not children, okay. And they're wealthy yeah. through the mother, it should be more the father. But in the end, just going back to your original point, while he's alive, yeah. he can do whatever he wants with his wealth. If he wants to pour it all as a waqf, it's your wealth, it belongs to you, you can do whatever you want with it. But if he's now saying that when I die, I'm going to put into my will that I don't want it to go to the kids because they're wealthy, now he has no right whatsoever to do that. Uh, in terms of wasiyah, bequest or wills, you have no right to exclude anybody that Allah has stated as an inheritor. In your lifetime, okay. you can do whatever you want with it. So tell him he can do, yeah? Okay, no problem. Thank you, Sheikh. Jazakallah Sheikh. Just take this question as well from Brother Hassan Abdullah. <coughs> Thank you for your um, questions. Uh, Salam, Sheikh. Is it permissible <laughs> to meet a potential spouse without her parents' knowledge, e.g. in a coffee shop? Wow. After <laughs> how many, uh, uh, after how many meetings should parents get involved? What's up? Conversation allowed. Okay, now we're going to answer it here live. We're going to set up some coffee shop meetings for him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make Sheikh Waddadi in charge. He can do the yeah, record the same time. No, no, time. he's a chaperone. He's a chaperone for him. Yeah. Right. So, um, and it, people have to be careful with this. Yes. Young, do you want to go back? Let's just, just put it uh, back there. Yeah, people there. need to be careful with that. So, so that it doesn't get out of control. Yep. Like if you're seriously considering somebody, it's not that you start dating them, you start going out with them, you start meeting them and so on. So dating is haram, <coughs> isn't it? Should hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it in the yeah. 23 steps? <laughs> no. yeah, no, categorically. <laughs> categorically, <laughs> categorically, yeah. Yes. Don't I, be encouraged to the I, No, I just want, no. that's why I asked the question, is to clarify that very... Oh, he's come to sing. 
Suleiman, come, tell him to call back to sing. Tell him, give us 10 minutes. Suleiman, assalamu alaikum. Um, خمسة دقائق بعد خمسة دقائق. Yes, inshallah. Okay, phone phone back in about five minutes, yeah. Yes, inshallah. Because I like this question. Yeah. Yeah. So, because <laughs> I can see some brother up there and he's walking around, he's thinking, oh, this is <laughs> this is messing up all of my dates. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got two bachelors there right yeah. in front of us. Um, so, يعني, parents and family should be involved as early as possible. Especially because if she's serious about it, uh, you've seen her, you know, you know some stuff about it, and you're kind of happy that it's it could go ahead. Then get parents involved as soon as possible. Why? Um, just to make sure that you're not messing about. Like the earlier you get some, and it doesn't even need to be parents. It could be like your brothers or sisters. Like uh, you, you met this girl once, and you're kind of happy. You see what she looks like, which is the main thing about meeting them. Um, so get your sister to go and meet her. Or the girl, get your brother to go and meet him because it makes it serious from the beginning that you're not just messing about. So maybe like your parents, is, it takes on another level because that's it. No, like once parents are involved, you're either getting married or serious. you're not. Serious. Yeah. <laughs> serious so, one, your mom and dad. I know once, once father and mother are in, that's we it, have a man. Call? Okay, <laughs> let's take the call, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. We're having a problem. Boston. Assalamu alaikum. Call up. Hello. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam Wa Rahmatullah. Is that Suleiman? No, it's no, not. It's, my name is Nasser. Okay, could you give us your name and where are you calling from, brother? Yeah, my name is Nasser. Uh, I'm, I'm calling you from Leeds. Leeds, okay. Asalaamu Alaikum and Nasser what, from Leeds. Good. What's your question to Sheikh Harun or Sheikh Wadda? Uh, basically, um, it's a bit of a deep question, to be quite honest. Um, with regards to, you know, we are told that um, when you pray for the deceased and yeah. you are basically helping them with regards to their deeds, etc. Um, my very close friend, I know you've talked a little bit about mental health. My best friend um, basically committed suicide yeah, a couple of years ago. Mm. Um, he had... Um, paranoid schizophrenia and okay. basically ended his own life mm -hmm. because of that. He was a non-Muslim. Now, I do pray for him kind of every day. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if my question is with regards to are my uh, prayers, you know, are they are the deeds of his deeds, are, is, you know, are they going to be accepted? Sure. I mean, I know you've You've said before it's it's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know, it's up to him to accept the, the, the prayers. Right. Is there anything that you can tell me about this, whether it's permissible to be praying for somebody who's a non Muslim and in that situation? Oh sorry, was he a non Muslim friend of yours who committed suicide? Yeah, he was, yeah. Best friend since school. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and you said he's your best friend from school? He was my best friend from school, yeah. So, yeah. Um. Sorry, I know it's a, it's a bit of a deep question. No, it is a very deep question. We only pray for believers who've died. We only pray for believers who've died. So, um, um, so me praying for Allah SWT to forgive him of his sins, is, is that not permissible for me to do that? Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala himself said, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. Allah will not forgive. Allah will not forgive that a person commits shirk I believe in other than him. Um, so any sin that, and if he's a Muslim, if your dad is a Muslim, even suicide, even if he commits a suicide, Allah will forgive him. That's in the realms of forgiveness. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he does not forgive, then then we can't say anything more than that. Allah mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, brother. Jazakallah um, khair, brother. For, for that yeah. question. It was Nasr, yeah. um, yeah, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Sab. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Jazakallah khair. Um, may Allah give you the mm. tawfiq, the strength to cope with um, 
you know, situations like that. Um, now, um, just to remind you, uh, on Thursday, we're coming up to the close to our <coughs> end of our program. Every Thursday, we have this exciting show with children under the age yeah. of 16. It can be a little bit over the 16. We'll, we'll, Sheikh, Sheikh Wadda, we'll, I think we'll increase it to 18 or 20, isn't it? Do you know why um, it's an open age for anyone? Yeah, yeah. okay. We, we've had 24 year olds who's ranging. We did, yeah. We've had Sheikh Haroon ranging as well, I called one. Oh, so that's right. Well, <laughs> well, he's below 24 anyway. Um, so uh, <laughs> he looks below. Yeah, taking that's me down. It, that's it. Yes, it has. <laughs> it's knocked um, off 20 years. <laughs> absolutely. So, so, so after the finishing of the show, I just want to say that do connect with us again Hello. with your children. Encourage them. Do we? Is that Sheikh Brother Suleiman? Suleiman. Assalamu alaikum, Kola. Wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullah. Brother, what's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Sakib. I'm calling from Nelson. Sakib from Nelson. Assalamu alaikum, Sakib. Wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullah. Um, sorry, I just had a question. Uh, I've, I mean, obviously we get to all different things about it, but I just wanted kind of clarification in terms of like interest yeah. um, in the UK. So like, you know, for example, if someone's got a house and they buy other houses, put them on rent and et cetera, et cetera. Is that permissible? Well, please, cause, um, buying buying a house on a mortgage to rent it out? Yeah. No. No, it's not. That's the no. fatwa that I took yeah. from my teachers. No, it's not. No, right. No, that's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah, you directed it. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that question. I'm going to move much. slightly quickly. Um, do we have any more questions on the screen, uh, Hamza? Yeah, I've got so it on my phone here. Let's you see. got one there? Go ahead, Sheikh. So hold on, let's go back. Um, oh, there's a few here. So, Anonymous H says, Assalamu alaikum. I just have a question regarding Qadha Namaz. Do you have to recite all of the Rood Ibrahim or not? If you do a qada of prayers that you've missed, oh, Suleiman's going to sing. Bismillah. Okay, let's, 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 let's have a sing. Can we just quickly answer this, yeah? Yeah. Um, so for, for the Hanafis, this is, this is an answer for Hanafis because there's a difference. Imam al-Shafi'i, he says that reading Salah Ibrahimi is a fard. It's a rukun of the prayer. Your prayer is not valid without. Abu Hanifi said it's sunnah of prayer. Um, <coughs> so, but even with that, the requirement with Imam al-Shafi'i is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. That's all that's needed. And that only takes a second to read. It doesn't really take that long. So yet you can show it. You don't need to read the full Durood Sharif. You don't need to read the full Innaka Hamidun Majid Allahumma Barika ala Muhammad. You don't need to read the full. So if you want to shorten your prayer when you're doing Qadha to get through Allah, you just, um, wa anna Muhammadan abduhu rasoolah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. That's, that's all you need to do. Allahu Akbar. But why would somebody, if I was reading it and and <coughs> I, that I missed the you know for and if I'm doing qaza, I should really do the full. You know why? Yeah. Because people uh, oh, okay. they've missed like two, three years, four, five years oh, worth of prayer, so they okay. want to get through large amounts. Large amounts. So they just want to shorten part of it to allow them to do more. <laughs> cheating them, <laughs> cheating with the. <laughs> okay, do we have Suleiman on the line? Assalamu alaikum, Suleiman. Suleiman, sing for the Suleiman. Okay. Uh, what? 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 Uh, is it a nasheed you're going to do? I suppose. Uh, yes, inshallah. Okay. And and what? What's this about? Tell us a little bit about the nasheed before we go on. Uh, I think it's about like uh, seeking knowledge. So like talabul al. Mashallah. Mashallah. Go ahead. I hope you know that. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Keep it short. Uh, yes, inshallah. inshallah. Oh, oh, Mm-hmm. <laughs> قال الوحي الأكرم أول قول في القرآن يقرأ وفهمت بذا تسلم أول قول 
بالقرآن يقرأ ربا فبها تسلم قل يا ربي زدني علما واجعل العلم عبادة يجعل أهل العلم السادة واجعل العلم عبادة يجعل أهل العلم السادة قم من مهدك طالب علم قم من مهدك طالب علم واسأل دوما منه زيادة قل يا ربي زدني علما فلكي تصبح كالمصباح نورا ظلمة جهل الناح فلكي تصبح كالمصباح نورا ظلمة جهل الناح يقبل عنها لا تتمهل أقبل في ليل وصباح قل يا ربي زدني علما وصلاتي تهدى للهادي أمين زعل إمدادي وصلاتي تهدى للهادي أمين زعل إمدادي علم كل الناس فبادر علم كل الناس فبادر علم كل الناس فبادر في منهجه الإرشاد قل يا ربي زدني علما قل يا ربي زدني علما زدني فقها زدني حكما أتبع قولك عملا يبني يجبر ذلك أسعت أمنا قل يا ربي زدني علما ما شاء الله Um, no, but just before that, what I'll do is I'll, there's about four or five. Qu- I'll just quickly, quickly try okay. and do one line answers. Yeah. Jazakumullah khair, Brother Suleiman. Thank you so much for your beautiful nasheed. Um, what I want to um, uh, ask you is, can you come to the studio on the Muslim Got Talent show uh, on Thursday in one of those days? Uh, yes, maybe inshallah. Okay. All right. Maybe next Thursday we shall have you live on studio. Yeah. So if you do, if you do come come by five forty five for the six o'clock show, okay? Uh, yes, inshallah. Jazakallah. You 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 read that very beautifully, mashallah. And <laughs> may Allah give you. Uh, he's only sixteen years old, Sheikh. No, mashallah. And he reads mashallah. very well, mashallah. You're improving day by day. Keep it up, and inshallah, we'll speak on Thursday. Well, we'll see you on Thursday, uh, right here. Okay. Um. The, really, we've run out of time today. But Sheikh Harun does wants to go through three or four questions. Yeah. We're not going to take any more calls, but he'll just answer those questions. That's so on 324, his Facebook. So three twenty-four. Some guy called Old School has been a cheeky little. But he says, so <laughs> how do we deal with jealousy in the half of Dunya matters? For example, a yeah. Liverpool fan looking at the league table and seeing United. So oh, yeah, the old school is on the screen as well. <laughs> you have to bring that in the old school. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. You, you, look, you look on Sunday night, mate, and then you'll see what it is. Won't be for long. <laughs> Adam has gone, sh- been breaking out of it. <laughs> Keep it quiet, lad. <laughs> um, so, Hassan Abdul. Yeah, anonymous HR at 335. I find myself in a state. Where I'm constantly renewing my faith and saying the English translation to help me stay focused on what I believe is this shaitan trying to put doubt in my heart. I don't totally get that. It's it's it's, it's an important point. Um, keep on reading the Quran with the translation if that helps you to strengthen your iman. Um, if you if you're saying that I have to keep on renewing my faith because of some doubt in iman, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that probably is shaitan playing around with you. But just keep on reading the Quran. Keep on attending. Classes, lectures, listen to the khutbah, take take the guidance from from these, um, and inshallah the, the effects of shaitan will go away. I'm trying to find a job, but I'm constantly struggling to get past the short listening process. Is there anything I can recite to help me find a job? Akthar min salati wa salam ali. Do a lot of salawat. Do a lot of salawat, um, especially before you go to apply. And then the last thing. What if parents? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be controversial, you know, yeah? Okay. So you close your ears. It's the same like old school. Boy. Yeah, but it's actually okay. an interesting question. Go on. What happens if parents stipulate high dunya matters, i.e., house, X amount of salary, like the mahar yeah. is, is ghali, it's, it's high? Um, just get married. If parents, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say straight, um, and I always get blamed for this, but I don't care. Just get married. Just get married. Especially for the Hanafis, because. 
the woman, the problem is a woman getting married without, without um, permission of wali. Abu Hanifa does not require that. I, zina is so rampant, and parents are still making it so hard for people to get married. Just get married. Even your father and your mother that don't agree with it, as long as you're salih and you're, you're trying your best, just get married. And if you're having problems, come here. I'm here, I'm, I'm the khatib here. <laughs> we'll do. Abu Hanifa, no. You don't need wali. Don't need, the woman, the man definitely doesn't. Nobody says, if you just go and get married, it doesn't matter what your dad says. Oh. <laughs> no. Dr. Hamid, he's getting married when he wants, not when you want. <laughs> the girl's the one where there's an issue. The girl, it's not the boy. And by a total agreement, a man can get married without permission of anybody. It's the woman. But if the parents are just being unreasonable, uh, unreasonable, they're just, just making it hard to get married, just come here, we'll do, we'll do the aqad here. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay, okay, I think the other question was what happens if parents stipulate high That's what I'm saying. Matters? That's what I'm saying. If they're Are making it too hard, just get married and forget uh, them. Is it to do with the marriage though? Is it to do with the house and the ex salary that the, 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 they're pressuring their child to do more excel in the dunya matters rather than the uh, spiritual world. I think oh, that's is that what it was? Yes, I think that's what it is. <laughs> You're getting carried away. <laughs> 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 that that. Yeah. I know. Uh, but it says here, what happens if parents stipulate <laughs> high I, I dunya saw the question matters? Before. I yes. saw the question before uh, about marriage and I linked it to No, 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 which is correct. Well, you are answer to that point one was valid. I like that point in a way. Absolutely. Because you know what? Loads of parents will allow their yeah. sons to have a girlfriend, yeah. That's the and thing. as soon as marriage comes in, stop for a while. That's the thing. Yeah, no, that's, that's not right. That's thing not comes right. in, he doesn't want to. No. And that's why I mean, I've actually done this before. Um, so they say parents won't let us get married, but they know where. Like they say, me and you, let's just do the aqad now and don't tell them anything. And make a halal in a way that Allah wants to halal. Wow, you are giving them a very powerful message that the fathers will be very unhappy. Hamza, you have a question. Abu Hanifa says no, the other three imams say yes. Okay. So there's a difference on that one. It's easier. We better watch Hamza now. Go find the woman. Just bring it here. Go find the woman. Bring it here. We'll get your marriage. You'll be walking Take that. And if he must have said away, you'll sort that out for it. Now, <laughs> now what, about, what about this one here? Uh, parents stipulate to do excel in the dunya matters, like get yourself a house, get yourself a big salary, but not probably focusing on the, on, on the spiritual I, side. I don't get what they're saying. Yeah. Is, okay. is that what they're saying? Just like work, work, work and make yeah. money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're no, saying concentrate the on the dunya rather yeah. than the akhirah. No, there is loads of parents who are like, yeah, like yeah. go and get a good job, go and do things in uni. Go. But they'll never go, hey, have you been in the mosque last yeah. week? Yeah. You go that, have you done you your do pray? That? Have you done the salah? You, or? You, should try and, you should try and please your parents with that. But if it's at the expense of like fulfilling your obligation and trying to better yourself, then you should try and balance it and try and tilt it over more towards that. Mashallah. Uh, so, so with those Sam, questions, Samsul Islam, I have a message from Rochdale. So Brother Samsul Islam, Jazakumullah khair for your good support. Oh, Samsul, yeah. I'm saying three nil, three nil for us, mate. Do you know what? We're going to have to have the Liverpool flag here with yeah. some scarf. Look, why don't some viewers uh, buy three Liverpool scarves and we'll wear it in the show? Shall we no, do that? No, we'll buy it. We'll yeah, I'll no, buy my own scarf. We, we, we want our, <laughs> no, no, our, no, no, our no, no, supporters to buy. Tell them get four, because Hamza's wearing one as well. Of course, Hamza's wearing one as well. Five? Yeah. Uh, 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 Shagar, by which team do you support? Liverpool? W Wales. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Is Aston Villa? Nah, that that you know, when I was a child, <laughs> when I was a child, I used to support Nottingham Forest. You know, uh, that was in the eighties, yeah, late seventies, I, I suppose. Club. You were a big, big club back then. And, and, and you know what? Do you know what? I used big to have club? you know those folders, well, the, the paper folders, right? And in the school, they would allow I would get all the stickers of the players the and put yeah. them on the yeah. on, on the folder and take it to school. <laughs> uh, nowadays, yeah. it's hurt and heard of, isn't it, Hamza? You can't take those stickers to school, but you were allowed in the late seventies um, to stick uh, your or favorite players on the folder and take it home, uh, take it to school. Just to anyway, collect the stickers, yeah. Is to collect the stickers. I used to collect the stickers. <laughs> Can we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to finish the show because you've got another appointment yeah, to get let's, to. Let's quickly sing. Two penalties, what's that? Oh, that's predictions. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, this is United. I'm going to start it. Dirty devil. Old um, we that. haven't really been singing much. We haven't no. really been singing. Come on, let's sing. Come on, let's sing last one. كشف الدجى بجماله حسنت جميع خصاله صلوا عليه وآله طالع البدر علينا من ثنيات الوداع 
وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دعا أيها المبعوث فينا جئت بالأمر المطاع جئت شرفت العوالم مرحبا يا خير داء الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم رب زدنا علما رب زدنا علما رب زدنا علما وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله we'll see you all next week إن شاء الله بإذن الله أحيانا we will please join us next Thursday every Thursday at 6 p.m. for the talent show. So you don't have to be under the age of 16. You can be over the age of 16 to show your showcase your talent. And of course, don't forget that Friday, next Friday, we will be back uh, about 2.30ish, I would say. So please join us. If you have any questions before then, do text me on the WhatsApp number and I will pass them to Sheikh Haroon and Sheikh Wadda for a reply. Inshallah, don't forget to go to our website and make some sort of a contribution, Sadaqat al Jariya, for the Yawm al Qiyamah. For your sake, Please give donations to the masjid for its upkeep. And of course, um, and like we said, if you liked, if you are a Liverpool supporter, buy us four scarf. Uh, there's one on the on, on the production team as well. Who's Liverpool? We will wear it for you. But if you're also blue, should we ask them to send some as well? No, no, no we, we can't. Okay. Jazakumullah <laughs> khairan, brothers and sisters, for your beautiful contributions, for all your questions. Stay tuned with AQS Media, and you won't be at loss. Inshallah, make dua. Be careful how you go about in this coronavirus situations if you get a chance get yourself vaccinated as soon as possible and protect everyone else inshallah we will meet again jazakumullah khairan to sheikh haroon sheikh wadda and the production team hamza and brother shagar as well assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa